The idea is that you can use tension to your advantage, that you can actually stop talking in the middle of a good conversation and just kind of sit there and relax, enjoy her, enjoy the band, and let her open you. So in this video, I want to cover silence and why most guys are afraid of silence, particularly the tension that rises up in silence. It's a problem. And um, I used to have a really severe problem with this myself. Like I would, I would go out to a bar back when I was first beginning and I wanted to meet women or even on the street or girl I liked it, wherever I knew her. And um, I would start speaking and there would be this part of me that was terrified that if I stopped speaking, she'd walk away. Or the other thing would happen is I spoke more and more and my in need to impress her, my want, my desire to get her to like me, I would start speaking faster and faster and faster, afraid of the silence, terrified that if I stopped speaking, she'd walk away or she'd realize it was boring. I, th I think that's the core of it at a, at a deep level is that you on some level think you're boring when you speak. That's what I, I thought. Or you thought your topics were boring or if you, if there was something about you that would bore her and be uninteresting or even push her away. So you're afraid if you stop talking, that's going to show through. And that couldn't be further from the truth. What pushes her away? And there, there, there is truth. There's a lot of validation to this, right? So I go out to talk to a girl and I stop talking and it gets awkward and she walks away. So what's the natural assumption? Well, silence is bad. They don't like silence. Silence is boring. And I got that assumption too. And it's actually totally not true. Again, when I first would go out, this would happen to me all the time. And then as I got better at communication, I got better at speaking and I really started to apply. I want to take this simple principle. I say it all the time, but I don't know how many of you really consider it. It's this idea that what you say doesn't really matter. And everybody's looking for the right pickup line. Somebody just asked me that the other day. I couldn't believe it on my, uh, on my, as much as I say the pickup, there is no real pickup line. Somebody just asked me that on a, a live stream and it doesn't matter what you say to the point that silence can be a really good thing. The tension in the silence can be a beautiful thing. I'm going to present an idea to you and then I'm going to go back and tell you a story to kind of illustrate this idea. And the idea is that you can use tension to your advantage, that you can actually stop talking in the middle of a good conversation and just kind of sit there and relax, enjoy her, enjoy the band, and let her open you. You can walk away, go to the bathroom, come back, see her talking to another guy and just kind of stand there and enjoy the moment and we'll pull her back to you with the silence because the silence can almost be deafening. The silence can be so powerful. You can open a woman, say, Hey, what's up? And then just relax and enjoy the silence from your turn on with your open heart and cause her to say something. Well, hi, you know what? And start to get curious because you're so good with the silence. And that's a really important skill to cultivate. Why is that so important to cultivate? Because when you talk, the words you say are being put over what you feel about yourself. And the silence shows through what you feel about yourself more than ever. Now, I remember dating this one girl. Uh, she was also a coach. And I would say something to her in the tension, like something we were, we were getting like serious, or maybe it was sexual, or maybe it was intimate, or maybe it was, I want to do this with you or whatever. And she would always do this. Look at me after I say something and just hold the tension. And we'd sit there in silence for a little bit. And she was reading my every inflection to figure out what the truth of what I just said was. I had a girlfriend once tell me something was wrong and she needed to talk about it. You know, we need to talk. And I remember her looking at me and I just stopped and I looked at her and I didn't say anything for a while. And she finally went, what? And I said, I'm just taking you in. I was doing the same thing that other girl was doing to me, to her. I was taking in all her inflections and her emotions, figuring out what she was feeling. And then we just went deeper, ended up. We just, that was a really intimate moment we had right there at that, after that, because then I really felt what was going on. So it was the silence that gave me the answer to that problem. And in her case, she's using the silence to feel. In my case, let, let's, let's use another example of silence. I might say to a woman, you know, you were really fucking beautiful. And the silence after what I say is more important almost in the words, almost. The words are important, they gotta be congruent. You gotta have your turn on in there, you gotta have your heart in there when you say it, but then the silence, can you hold it? 
Are you going to go think about something else? Are you going to worry about what her response is? Are you going to analyze to see if she liked what you said? Or are you just going to enjoy it and own it? And that's a big, big difference. Insecure men, and I used to be one, are terrified of silence because in the silence, their insecurity shows through. It's like my old friend used to say, um, putting whipped cream on shit. You put a bunch of fancy words over the shit and it's gonna smell through. But if you actually enjoy the silence, you relax into the silence, you have fun with the silence, you can almost have a whole conversation in the silence and that's the beauty of it. Now that story I promised you earlier, we had a client once here at Fearless and he came to us and said, you know, I, I approach a lot and I can't get any women. And I said, well, what, what is approaching a lot? And what does that mean? And he said, I approach about two hours a day, taking all this pickup, approached about two hours a day, every day out at the uh, local open air mall in the middle of the day. And he still wasn't getting much for dates. And I said, in the last two, three months, if you're approaching two hours a day, you should have had a lot of dates. How many dates have you had? And he said, one. And I said, one? That doesn't make sense. He goes, yeah, I get, I get numbers, but they quickly ghost me or they don't call back at all. They fade away. And I was like, interesting. This is fascinating that, that you're, you're putting in that much effort. I mean, sure, luck should get you plenty of dates. So I said, let me go watch you. So we went down to this open air mall, it was, it was close to my house. And we, I watched him talking to girls. And the first thing I saw was that he started talking to this girl and he opened her and he was really present using really good sub communication, turn on body language. I thought this guy's doing a great job. And I saw the girl lean in and there was that bubble they created and there was this flow of penetrating energy between each other and there was a little bit of turn on and it was really nice and he's talking away and he's present and he's enjoying the moment and then what what happens when he stops speaking this was the magic of where he was screwing up i guess the the anti-magic and he uh, he stopped speaking and she was leaning in and that's you know he gave her space to respond and as soon as she started to respond to what he was saying he would go from this present place to up in his head thinking, gone. Like barely half listening, 25% listening, thinking about what to say next. And that's really ineffective. If you have to sit there and analyze her words and analyze what you just said, and you're not present with the girl in front of you. Matter of fact, you're shutting off a good bulk of your emotions. He was terrified of the silence. He was terrified of listening to her and just feeling her emotions and being present. He was terrified of being boring. And so what ended up happening next was really interesting. Of course, she, she would, you could see her start to pull back and the bubble would start to break and it would, it would break. And then he would start to speak again. He'd come back in and there'd be this nice connection again. She'd pull back in. And then he'd stop speaking and the bubble would break again. And this happened three or four times and by then, you can only imagine how confused this poor girl was. And if he got her number, I think. I, I don't know for sure, but I think he got her number. And again, a girl like that's probably not going to respond or she's gonna ghost you or she'll talk for a little bit and disappear because the memories of this nice connection and then the pullback and, and, and it's, it's inconsistent and it's awkward and it's weird and it creates confusion, right? Because one minute you're there, one minute you're gone. A lot of guys are never there. I mean, even when they're speaking, they're not there. There's no connection. They're just rambling at the girl, hope, throwing shit at the wall, hoping something will hit. But in this case, he was there. He had, he knew what to do. He just wasn't doing it right. So I said to him, here's what I want you to do. I want you to do the exact same thing you just did. But in the silence, I don't want you to, th when you stop talking, I don't want you to try to think of anything to say. I asked him, I said, what were you doing? He said, I was trying to think of the next thing to say. I said, I don't want you to do that. I just want you to be present with the girl in front of you. As a matter of fact, I want you to keep doing what you're doing, feeling her, enjoying her, reading her, and don't worry about the next words that come out of your mouth. Don't even try to think of anything clever. Matter of fact, to illustrate this point, I, what I really want you to do, so you don't have to stress or worry about the next thing to say, is ask really boring stuff. Stuff you think is boring, but stay as present as you were. Now, I knew he could get away with it because he was so present, so turned on when he was speaking. So I said, if you keep doing that and you focus on, hey, where are you from? What do you do? You're interesting. Because his presence was so strong, I felt like he would do pretty good. And this would get him over his fear of being boring. And then after he got over his fear of being boring, he would start coming up with more and more clever stuff to say too. 
And then there was a second assignment given to him. Um, I gave him one and my business partner gave him another. And I don't remember who gave what. But the second assignment was, you got a lot of sexual tension when you're talking to girls. And if you maintain that sexual tension, interesting things can happen. And I said, so well, here's what I want you to do. Uh, or he said it or one of us said it. I said, when it starts to really connect and you feel like it's going somewhere, ask her to come home with you. Like right here on the open. You, you may not succeed. But if you do a good job, she's probably going to giggle, laugh. She's going to say, oh, I can't. I'm going here. It's based on how his energy was being. It's not going to go bad. He did just that. The very next girl that walked over, he started flirting with her and he locked in. So what do you do? Mm -hmm. Sat in the silence for a little bit and enjoyed it. Stayed in his body. Didn't go up to think. Oh, interesting. Tell me more about that. Oh, why? Oh, that's cool. And then he'd share a little bit about himself. And this went on for a few minutes and I was watching and I was seeing he was staying right in there because he wasn't trying to be clever. That was his assignment is to, in a sense, be boring, but stay here, focus on the subcommunication, the nonverbals, the feeling in his voice, that type of stuff. And so he started to do that and he was doing that. He didn't start to do that. He was doing a really good job of it. And, um, so then the point came, we were kind of sitting there observing from a distance and that, that point came when it was time for that question and he asked it. He said, you know, um, I'm really enjoying talking to you. And I'm gonna paraphrase, I don't remember the exact words, a few years ago. And uh, I'm really enjoying talking to you. And uh, you know, I don't live far from here. I got a nice bottle of wine. Why don't you come back to my place? And we'll spend some time together and have a nice glass of wine. And she leaned in to the tension got a little closer and went, I don't know. I mean, I got a boyfriend, but maybe. And I remember hearing the maybe. And I was like, yeah. And then immediately what he did, of course, was he heard that and he freaked out inside. And he went, oh, uh, okay. Um, uh, and he pulled out again. Well, maybe next time. And he killed it right there. He freaked out again in the silence and got out of it. But he did an amazing job considering he wasn't used to that. That was the first time he ever had it progress like that. So he got her number and walked away. Uh, and we talked about it. You know, he said, and I asked him, I said, why did you do that? And he said, I just got scared. When it looked like it was gonna go, it was gonna happen. I got really nervous. And when he started doing that, his game changed. Suddenly he started getting dates. I started talking to him a little bit. I haven't seen him in a long time, but he kept telling me, oh my God, I got more dates than I can handle right now. Because he learned that what women really want is to feel connected to you. Your fancy conversation isn't as important as the connection. Now, connection doesn't mean codependence, and that's a big mistake you nice guys make. You think connection means leaning in, and that's the other mistake guys make, is they lean in too much. He was pulling back to think. And so another one is guys are afraid of the silence or afraid of moving forward, you know, because they lean in too much. They see the woman, they want her so bad. Hi, um, interesting. And they push, push. And there's even in the silence, they sit there and they'll push. Hi, where are you from? And there's this intensity in their eyes because they want her so bad and she can feel it. She can feel every bit of that. So the next piece is you gotta learn to relax. I, I call it relaxing into your spine. I actually put my awareness on my spine up and down when I'm like that. Some people I tell them to move forward because they're too far back, but other people feel up and down and just relax and let her see you with your eyes, enjoying her, appreciating her, being curious about her. Do you even know in your body what curiosity feels like, what appreciation feels like, what turn on feels like? You should know all of this. Because that's what you're doing when you're having a conversation. You're sharing those experiences, especially when you first meet somebody, when they're hyper evaluating whether they want to hang out with you again. That first three minutes of a conversation, they're really deciding, do I want to get to know this person? That's why we get so scared of the silence. Now, when I first figured this out many years ago, I remember, wow, silence is powerful. And I thought this, I thought silence is so powerful. I'm going to start to play with it. And I did it as a practice. And so what I did was I remember going to this bar. It was um, in Hollywood somewhere. And I had walked away, gone to the bathroom and I came back. And the girl I'd been talking to, having a really good conversation with, was talking to another guy. Another guy comes start hitting on her. And I noticed the guy was a little rambly, a little speedy. And 
I could tell he wasn't good with silence because if he stopped, his mind would start racing. So I was watching him and I said, you know what, I'm just going to stand here and I'm not going to say anything. Normally this would make me really uncomfortable, like I'm being awkward, but if I can relax and really enjoy, and hey, what's up? Just kind of that what's up energy, but not say anything and just sit here. And I want to see what she'll do. And sure enough, she turned, she talked to him for a little bit and then turned and locked back in with me. And I was like, interesting. Because the old me, the racy me, I know she would have walked away. But when I did that, it was really interesting. So then I tried it again. I remember, I think the next weekend I was in Vegas and I was at the Blue Martini. If you guys all know, that's a local spot. And I was hanging out in uh, at the Blue Martini and I was talking to this girl and we were having a decent conversation. It was nice. And the band was playing. And I remember I said, I'm going to stop talking right now. I'm going to say the next sentence. And I thought in my mind, I'm going to stop. I said the next sentence and I stopped and I just relaxed. And I started to look at the band and I looked around the room, but I was right next to her. I just wanted to see what she would do. And then I wanted to see how relaxed I could get. And pretty soon she was trying to open me more, trying to start a conversation with me again. And I realized how powerful this really was. You see, silence is your friend because it teaches you to relax and not push and not chase and teaches you to slow down your mind. It also increases tension, which can be very sexy if you if you keep the tension at the right level for the for the two of you. You don't want to overdo the tension, but if there's too little tension, it's boring. Overdoing the tension blows out the conversation. The right amount of tension can actually create a nice flow between you two, create a flow state, and that can be really sexy too. So I want to invite you into this practice of enjoying silence and then enjoying the tension that arises from it. And so go out and do this practice, you know, open somebody and don't say anything and relax as much as you can. Enjoy them. Let's have a conversation. And when it's going good, stop and relax and see if they'll reopen you. Walk out of a conversation, come back and see if you can get them to open you through silence. These are all three great practices that teach you a lot about silence. Now, if you feel anxiety rising, you don't feel like it's rising in your body and it's going up, that's what's going to push the person away. So be aware of that. Maybe you have to do it three or four or five times before you can stay relaxed enough. Start doing it with, if it's beautiful girls are too, are too hard to do with, do it with strangers. Just talk to them, say, ask a question, ask directions and see if you can relax and just appreciate and enjoy them. And then work your way up to the beautiful girls. But practice with silence. Practice feeling good and the key here is you got to feel good in the silence you got to relax in the silence you got to feel your heart kind of open in the silence you got to feel your turn on in the silence and the more you can do that the more powerful of a communicator you're going to become oh and one more thing try having a conversation where you focus so much on the way you're being that you don't have to worry about so much what you're saying play with saying average stuff don't worry about being super creative Create the tension a little bit through the eye contact, through the vocal tone, through the bubble you're creating, through the enjoying of the person that's in front of you, through pulling away and maybe disconnect a little, gain a confident, relaxed way, look at something over there, and then come back. And, and remember, you want it to feel like a dance. And if you're not aware of your body, and you can enjoy the pauses, like the breaks in the music with it, there's that nice pause in a dance, you can't enjoy the dance. And that's what you're learning to do here. So I want to invite you into the world of silence. This is what meditation helps with too. So practicing meditation is another great, great way to practice. As a matter of fact, I just realized this. You could literally practice meditation at home. I've done this before, by the way. Go to a park and practice. Then go to a, a coffee shop and do some meditation, light meditation. And see if you can get just comfortable and relax and open heart. And then go to a bar that's not so busy at some point when the bars reopen. In a more busy environment. Until you're in a very busy environment and you're very relaxed and open. I used to do this back when I was super anxious. Matter of fact, I, go, I remember one week I went to a bar every night of the week to practice just relaxing. Not looking at my cell phone. Not trying to talk to anybody. Just relaxing. And I remember that distinct moment when I got a lot more comfortable in my body. It was one night I went out and I said, wow, I'm actually, because I was super anxious in bars at that time. And I remember I was like, wow, I'm actually enjoying this environment. And I don't need anybody to validate me to feel good. I'm not worried about what people think of me. This is really nice. And it was a big change for me. So there you go, guys. This is why a lot of men don't enjoy the silence. And I'm going to invite you into 
this world of learning to enjoy the silence. I believe this can be a massive game changer for everybody. Also, by the way, I should have brought this up earlier in the video. If, you, if you're getting value out of these videos and you got value out of this one, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps us to grow the channel. We got to get the channel going again. It helps us to keep everything going. And what that does allows us to bring you more of this content. Okay. And if you want a lot more good content, that's a great way to help us out. The other thing you can do is like the video. Really appreciate that. Comment in the video. Let us know if you liked it, what you didn't like, what, what the practice did for you. We're really open to that stuff and really curious. And we're always checking the comments. And we also figure out a lot of our future videos based on your comments. And uh, on top of that, share the video. If you haven't shared it and you know somebody out there that can really benefit from this, please share. Those shares really help to get the algorithm going and get us more viewers so we can, again, create more of these videos for you. Now, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be back soon with another one. And remember, only the confident really live. Take care. Have a beautiful day.